Hello, this is Mac Recurring with another sample birth chart reading. Uh, this reading will be for Monday, February 17th, 1992 at 2.12 p.m. in Kingston, Jamaica. And for anyone who may be watching this, if you do want to seek a reading just like this one, feel free to contact me. I always put my email and website in the description of every video that I post. Um, but yeah, you can get more information on the readings on my website and you can purchase readings directly through my website as well. Or you can use my PayPal, which is the same as my email. And what else do I have to say about that? Oh, I always have to say I don't generally post readings publicly. Uh, this person volunteered to have theirs posted publicly. So um, definitely don't think that I will you know, publish your information without your consent. So definitely not a requirement. Most of my readings I publish or I post as a, a, an unlisted YouTube video so that only you can see it, only the client can see it. Um, okay, but at any rate, so for this chart, this means that you have Sun and Aquarius, Moon and Leo with Cancer rising. The first thing I noticed about your chart is that you are pretty elementally balanced. When I was conversating, or I guess not, I don't know if conversating is the right word. When we were conversing through email, I kind of felt like kind of water sign vibes from you. Um, so I may have been kind of picking up on your Mercury or your Ascendant since you have Pisces Mercury and Cancer Rising. You also have Pisces Midheaven as well. Um, so you definitely do have those major water placements, but you also have, you know, Moon and a fire sign. Um, there are no other fire sign planets, but the Moon... I've often said before that like the moon, I think is the kind of strongest placement it has to do with our core personality and our emotions. Um, sun is an Aquarius though, bringing some air into the mix and then Venus and Mars are in Capricorn, bringing some earth. And of course the outer planets are there as well. But for this first part of the reading, I usually just cover the more personal placements. Um, so yeah, you really do have a mix elementally speaking. I think having Sun and Aquarius with Moon and Leo is a particularly really powerful combination. Um, it also means that you're born just before a full moon, maybe a day or two before a full moon. So you have the challenge of dealing with Sun and Aquarius, Moon and Leo, two very different opposing forces. Um, how do you balance those two energies within yourself? That may be especially difficult at a young age but this will come more naturally to you as you get older you know how can you be so passionate and instinctual and spontaneous like your leo moon would suggest but also rational detached um, holistic and long-term focused as well as your aquarius sun would suggest um, it is sorry but i don't know if you could hear my notifications going off i think it should stop now um, but, um, but yeah, that would be difficult to balance those. It would be difficult to balance those themes, but it shows that you have huge potential, uh, because once you can learn to manage that balance, it's, you, it's an incredible, um, strength that you can have. Um, okay. And, and also too, really just the mix of so many different elements in your chart that in itself is going to be a huge challenge as well as huge potential for you too. Um, because you can kind of do it all. You can have the passion of the Leo moon, but also the objectivity and detachedness, the coolness of Aquarius sun, but also the, you know, emotion and um, intuition of your water placements as well. I don't know how to turn this off. I'm sorry. There we go. Now it should be off. Very unprofessional of me. I'm sorry doesn't usually happen um i was gonna say too it is interesting how leo moon would usually suggest that you are very much like part of the group you're well well received well understood it's definitely a leadership you know placement and i think there's a lot of charisma that can come with leo placements in general however your sun and mercury are both in detriment with sun and aquarius and mercury and pisces so those detriment placements would suggest that you are maybe a bit counterculture that you don't always fit in. So really you're kind of a combination of both. You can, you know, you have one foot in the box, one foot out of the box. You're 
very i don't know maybe quirky or unusual but at the same time part of you can be very charismatic and popular as well so it's, it's a bit of a, a mix with you um i guess really that's a, probably the most major theme of your chart that i'm seeing so far is that it's it's really a mixture of a, of a lot of different energies and influences um, you do have most of your planets clustered in capricorn aquarius and pisces but then you know moon and leo and even jupiter and virgo are some significant outliers that are over you know on the other side of the chart in these summer signs so so yeah it's however you slice it your chart is really a mix of completely different energies which i guess you could argue every chart is but not in the same way that yours is elementally and such um but anyway so having aquarius sun with pisces mercury these detriment placements that would suggest you know being very out, out of the box being open to unusual ideas unusual experiences with mercury and pisces in particular that shows that you're open to unusual ideas or concepts or information astrology is a great example many people who have mercury and pisces are open to strange or even frowned upon ideas such as astrology itself um so I just thought that was definitely worth pointing out. Um, I did notice your Capricorn stellium. There's a lot going on there. With Venus and Mars in Capricorn, you may actually appear a little bit like a Capricorn. Um, Capricorns can often appear... Um, I'm picturing this one actor. I forget his name. But they tend to have like... Like their bone structure is really beautiful, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um you know they tend uh timothy Char charlemagne he's got that i don't know chin and like the bone structure i think he has sun and capricorn but um but you may appear kind of capricornian like that if that makes sense uh maybe because venus and mars do have to do with your appearance but venus and mars also have to do with what you desire and your pleasure and ambition so having both of those at the end of capricorn suggests that you really value the long term more than anything like not just romantically, but in any part of your life, you know, if something isn't going to hold weight in the long term, you're generally not going to be interested in it at all. You're constantly looking for things that will be sustainable, things that will make sense in the long run. You know, you're looking for things that are sufficient and responsible and things like that. Um, also, having Venus and Mars on the seventh house, I think, would make you really shine in the area of partnerships and relationships it's funny because the last chart i read also had a really stacked seventh house but um but yeah having four planets in the seventh house means that you're gonna have some really interesting experiences through your relationships romantic or otherwise uh, venus and mars in the seventh house shows that you really desire connection you know connecting with other people especially in one-on-one -on -one interactions and again, I think it shows that you really shine there. You come across very pleasurable, attractive in your one-on-one -on -one interactions. Um, and again, it's not just romantic connections, but if, it, if you have like a best friend or a business partner, um, those types of relationships are where you're going to really shine. You're going to, you're going to, I think you would enjoy those types of interactions. And because of that, others would enjoy you through those interactions as well if that makes sense like you have a certain charisma there um, but also with Uranus and Neptune there's going to be really strange and otherworldly experiences that you have through relationships through other people and you may attract very strange people as well um, people that are very beautiful and pleasurable and fun and attractive and charismatic but also people that are strange you know alien um, maybe psychic or um, people that are just very different than everyone else, very unique. Uh, so it's really a mixed bag when you have so many planets there. It's really strange because I, I know I just said this, but the last chart I read also had four planets in the seventh house. So what are the odds of that? Um, so I'm just hearing myself saying some, of the, some similar things. I did notice as well that you have south node in Cancer, conjunct the ascendant. Um, this is a little bit... I think it's a difficult placement. I think it's difficult whenever you have a major placement such as the Ascendant conjunct to your South Node because it suggests that you are still really holding on to themes from your past lives. 
um, for you, it's in the sign of cancer. So maybe that's what I was sensing as well, conversating with you that, um, in a weird way, you have some really major water placements, Mercury, Pisces, mid heaven Pisces, Ascendant Cancer, and then South Node in Cancer as well. Um, I think the Ascendant is such a kind of subconscious part of ourselves, especially having Ascendant in Cancer, which is a very emotional, you know, very instinctual and intuitive energy. Um, but having South Node there as well, that means that you, you really identify with Cancer, if that makes sense. So in other words, uh, you may really identify with your emotions and how you feel in the moment. You, especially at a young age, you may kind of overly focus on how you feel in the moment, um, which is really strange because that's completely different than what I was just saying about how it's like you really do truly value the long term and the, you know, the big picture. Yet at the same time, your personal identity is totally caught up in how you feel in the moment. Um, so that also is going to be difficult to balance. You know, how do you, it's like you're wanting something completely different than what you are. You yourself are, um, I don't know, so in touch with your feelings and so in touch with the present moment, I guess. I think what you're valuing is something completely different than yourself. You're wanting someone, someone much more stoic. Um, you're wanting things that will last for the future, yet you don't, you yourself don't really match up with that, if that makes sense. Um, there's this kind of struggle there. But again, I think that's something that's going to become easier over time if it hasn't already, as you learn to kind of manage that, that balance. Um, I may talk more about that later, but I want to continue just kind of scoping around. Oh, I did notice your Jupiter is in detriment as well. So Jupiter, Sun, Mercury are all in detriment. I think that's it. Um, Pluto's in domicile, Saturn's in domicile. Mars is actually exalted. I almost missed that. Um, so you do have a really strong Mars. Mars in Capricorn is very ambitious. I think Mars just works really well in Capricorn because Mars represents our ambition and our drive and it represents a part of ourselves that can sometimes be a little bit maybe short tempered or nearsighted, um, maybe overly passionate. But putting Mars in Capricorn avoids many of those typical downfalls, I think, because it means that your immediate drives are irrevocably linked to very long term ideals, long term themes, if that makes sense. So it sounds a little bit contradictory, but it actually works really beautifully. I think that you, you value the long term. You're willing to put in the work, you know, to make something work in the long run. But again, how does that match up with, you also have this side of yourself that's so focused on how you feel in the moment. Um, so honestly, I'm not really sure how those work together. I think they're two very different parts of yourself that, they they still exist in the same person they must work together somehow um speaking of that i think you, you learning to balance those two sides of, of yourself can be very powerful uh because you can be very i don't know aware in the moment and you know emotionally intelligent emotionally aware you can be very sure of how you feel but at the same time you can also be working on much longer term projects or working on big picture projects. And really, I think that's something key within your chart because that's also something that comes up with your sun moon opposition, you know, moon and Leo, which is so primal and engaged in the moment, but then also sun and Aquarius, which is much more detached and focused on the future. So really there's these two like polarities that I think kind of run throughout your chart. I did want to mention as well that with Cancer Rising, Moon is the chart ruler. So Moon in Leo is kind of calling the shots, which again, that's another one of those placements that's very instinctual and um, what else? Fiery, proud. It's not the worst placement to have, you know, being so strong in your chart. Moon is also in the second house, which suggests that you're very independent, but really it's your, your chart is going to be a challenge for me because it, it is, I'm learning more and more with your chart that is, it is such a, it's a little bit contradictory because, um, well, I was going to say moon and second house Leo looks very independent that you, 
really want to do everything your way. And that's something that Sun and Aquarius has in common as well, and Mars and Capricorn. You want to do things your way. You want to, you know, you're not afraid to blaze your own path and to stand out from everyone else. But at the same time, though, that doesn't really gel with your water placements, I don't think. Um, maybe it would if you had a lot of placements in Scorpio, which can be a little bit rebellious or, you know, individualistic. Uh, but you don't as much. So it's more the south node and ascendant in Cancer, Mercury, and I guess Midheaven in Pisces. Those placements suggest to me that you can be very cuddly, feely, you know, touchy feely, that you want to connect with others. So again, how do you balance that with also being so independent and, you know, doing everything your way and um, saying, I don't care what everyone else is doing, I'm doing things my way. How is that, you know, it's going to be a challenge balancing that with your desire to connect with other people. <clears throat> because having Ascendant and South Node and Cancer, those are two major can really loves connecting with others, especially on a deep level. So I think what you're looking for is maybe someone else who sees the world that you do the same way you do. Um, you're looking for someone to maybe rebel with or um, I don't know, someone to blaze your own path with, like a fellow rebel, a partner in crime maybe, or maybe like a tribe or family to rebel with. I'm not really sure. See, it's a bit of a stretch combining these um, different themes. But again, like I said before, and I'll say it again, with all this contrast, it's going to be really difficult in your younger years. I think you would probably be very frustrated and you may even feel crazy at a young age but over time it'll become more and more natural for you to balance these very different energies that you have within you and again that's where there's huge potential um you can kind of be a master of all of all these energies you know you can kind of do it all once you learn um learn to balance and cope with this variety in you um you know, knowing when, when cultivating that connection with others is appropriate or advantageous versus knowing when to go on your own or to rebel, I guess, or to be independent. Okay, hopefully that gives you a little bit to chew on. Um, let's go to this next chapter. So in this next chapter, we'll talk about your past life ex experiences a little bit. And we'll talk about how those relate to your challenges and your potential in this life. And we'll talk about your upbringing as well in this chapter. So going back to the South Node, whenever you have a major placement conjunct the South Node, to me it suggests that you likely had a past life or maybe multiple past lives which were particularly interesting or intense um, something, you know, like shit may have really hit the fan, so to speak, in your past lives. Um, you know, it shows that you really very strongly identified with the sign of cancer in, in past lives. So you may have literally, um, incarnated from the cancer constellation or, um, Sirius, the, the Canis Major and Sirius, um, constellations, constellation and star they are very close to cancer as well see i've noticed like many people are of like syrian i don't know if you believe in star seeds and things like that um, but many people are either pleiadian or or syrian or reptilian or what have you um but syrian uh, people tend to identify with cancer i feel like so um but anyway so in past lives um uh, you may you may have taken on a kind of cancerian role so you may have been you know a mother or even a father or someone else who took care of those that were like vulnerable or young you may have been what else could that be maybe a leader but it's more like the leader the same way that the mother is the leader of a family like you were a leader but in the like a leader of emotion the leader of compassion a leader in a kind of nurturing way um you were someone who had to be extremely emotionally aware and you were very you were extremely intuitive um what else i guess you could have been something like a i'm learning that many people were shamans and like i feel like many people that i read the charts of 
turn out to be um, shamans in past lives. So I could see you doing that too, because that would also involve being a kind of nurturing leader and then also being very intuitive or, you know, psychically aware. Um, something like that is what I see for you. I can never pinpoint it down exactly. I can only go off the themes of your south node and and in this case, the ascendant since the south node is near it. Um, but, um, but anyway, so what, whatever this past life was, you so strongly were focused on your emotions and intuition and psychic abilities. Um, you may have been much more focused on the non-physical realms than the physical realm. Um, either that or very much focused on these, you know, maybe family ties or, you know, nurturing, caregiving relationships, things like that. So, so I think that's why it's difficult coming into this life. Coming into this life, you're going to have particularly intense strengths as well as particularly intense challenges or, or weaknesses, I guess you could say as well, because you have so much um, you have so much past life experience dealing with the themes of cancer, dealing with that emotion, nurturing, etc. So when it comes to those themes, you've got that down. That's in a way, that's what you're all about. Yes, the rest of your chart is kind of, you know, scattered and brings up many other energies as well. Um, but I would say, especially coming into this life, like when you were young, you may have been very emotional, very nurturing, um, and very maybe psychically aware as well. Um, I think it may it may have been more difficult for you initially in life to to be I don't know more um, more focused on the mundane aspects of reality I guess or you know to manage your time well or to I don't know I think. My speculation is that throughout your life so far, I think you have become much more aware of the long term and that that is something that you value. Like I said earlier, um, you can have excellent foresight and you can manage your time well. But I think many of these things may have been learned for you. And I think at a young age, you may have been you may have maybe overly identified with your emotions, like your emotions were so developed, but at the cost of maybe everything else. You were so aware of how you felt in the moment. And Leo Moon backs it up as well, that you were, you know, so confident with how you felt. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I think that can be dangerous if you have one sense or one, you know, way of dealing with the world that is so strong. But then, you know, if the other senses aren't built up yet, that can be difficult because emotion, just like anything else, it has its blind spots, right? It would be the same as if you were if you had a different chart and you were overly analytical and that's all you did and you weren't in touch with your emotions, it, it's the same. It's just different, right? Um, you know, each sense can have its blind spots and that's why ultimately, ideally, I think we'd like to have a mixture of, you know, intuition and logic and analysis and emotion. I think, I, you know, the best situation would be to combine those different intelligences, if that makes sense. Um, so I think that's something that you're working on. I think that you probably have largely achieved that by now, but looking at your past lives and looking to that energy that you brought in to this life when you were young, I think you would have been much more emotional, not as developed in these other areas, if that makes sense. Um, and again, I think there's a kind of a stigma with emotion. I'm not saying being emotional is a bad thing. There are great aspects to being emotional there's a huge intelligence there like for instance i think you very much have always been aware of how you feel which is a huge asset not everyone has that um, and also just the the intuition that comes with that strong emotional intelligence as well i think is something that you've always possessed um but i mean but again it's just a different sense just like analysis it can be wrong just because we feel something doesn't mean that it's grounded or that it will you know, it doesn't mean that following that emotion will truly serve us in the long run. Just like if we overthink and overanalyze everything, that can also lead us to mistakes as well. Um, so anyway, so hopefully that makes sense. But um, so I think for you, the challenge, I think I've pretty much said it. I think the challenge is 
branching out to other parts of reality other than how you feel in the moment. And it's not about disregarding your emotions. I think it's excellent that you have such strong emotional awareness. But how do you combine that with your constraints? Like, that's what kind of Capricorn represents, right? We are constrained. You know, we can't just do what we want in the immediate moment or um, we can't. I mean, you can choose to be hedonistic on some level. But if we're constantly, you know, doing what's most pleasurable to ourselves for ourselves in the moment you know that's going to be unhealthy later on right so that's where it's all about that push and that pull and that balance that really i guess everyone has to find that balance right but i think that's especially relevant for you i think you've may you may have really struggled with that at a young age and maybe you're still kind of um, learning to perfect that balance the balance of honoring how you feel in the moment while also taking care of the future you as well, setting up the future you for success, uh, making sure that you're healthy and responsible and I don't know, managing your time and all that, you know, finding long-term pleasure and success as well. Um, also part of this too, is that the, the North node is in the seventh house. So <laughs> part of this is that when you're in past in your past lives, you were so focused on how you you felt in the moment you may have been very nurturing if you felt like being nurturing but at the same time you were very much focused on your own feelings so part of the challenge in this life is learning to branch out and to be receptive to the feelings of others as well um, because i think that's something that people with major placements in cancer in general struggle with at times you know yes there is this very nurturing um side of cancer but at the same time i think when you have such major cancer placements sometimes you can be so caught up with your own emotions that there's no room for anything else not as not only is there no room for you know analysis or logic there's also no room for other people's emotions because you're feeling such strong emotions yourself um so so north node is in seventh house suggesting you know, being open to others, learning to cooperate with others, even even in times of heavy emotion, or maybe especially in times where you are feeling very emotional, very passionate or sad or angry, whatever it is, um, you don't have to shut down and completely just become blind to everything outside of that feeling that you have in the moment. I think your, node, your nodal axis is suggesting that you may actually have this kind of hidden power. Maybe you found it already, but I think it may be very beautiful of, you know, in those times when you're most emotional, learning to remain open to other people through through that experience. I'm hoping this makes sense because I'm really going out on a limb here. But um, But you can have both. I think that's the point that I am working to illustrate that's the point that i always try to illustrate with with the nodal axis that um it's really about both honoring how you feel in the moment which probably comes much more naturally to you but also working together with other people working working with with limited resources limited time energy money um you know if because um because I think having such primal and like instinctual emotions is sometimes completely at odds with these constraints. We are constrained by, you know, fitting in with other people, honoring, you know, longer term commitments and obligations, honoring, I don't know, societal expectations may you know all of these things so i think you have the potential of becoming a master of this balance um you know especially later in life and you've probably already learned a great deal in this area but it is an area of potential as well as challenge for you here for sure um you are part of the saturn in aquarius subgeneration, um so having saturn in aquarius really having saturn in any air sign suggests that at a young age you don't you didn't like to be around other people 
you don't have a whole lot of other air placements, so I don't think this is a super dominating theme in your chart the way it would maybe someone else who has a lot more air placements. But still, on some level, when you were young, you didn't know where you fit in with other people. You didn't maybe fit in anywhere. Um, you may have had either social anxiety or maybe you just didn't like people, especially on a group level. Like you may have not liked groups of people. Um, you may have been stressed out by groups of people, maybe. <laughs> um, or what else? You may have not liked speaking with people on a kind of communal or public level. But this too is an area of potential for you. Um, you've already gone through your Saturn return semi-recently. Um, that would have happened, I don't know, in 2021, 2022, somewhere around there. Um, so you just recently went through some kind of heavy responsibility and some kind of trials and tribulations. Um, some kind of struggle that you had to go through on your own and whatever that was i think it may have helped you learn your place in society learn how to connect with other people um, learn how to be around other people you may have kind of brushed up on your social skills maybe um, but whatever it is, I think, you know, having Saturn in Aquarius suggests that you actually have the potential of being a leader, especially later in life, being a leader of groups of people. Um, I don't know, leading, leading groups of people, leading communities, maybe being a leader in your workplace. I think a storm is coming in, so I apologize if it gets a little noisy. Uh, we had one earlier too. Um, but yeah. Saturn and Aquarius, I think I pretty much covered that. Um, but yeah, the power to become a leader there later in life. It is interesting you have Lilith conjunct Saturn. So there's something um, that's that's kind of a really interesting mix. Part of you, I think, wants to just be wild and rebellious and free and just, you know, go with some really potentially dark energies, but um, not evil, not bad. Uh, just dark in the sense that they can be so uninhibited. Um, I think part of you wants to... How do I even say it? This, is, this chart really is a challenge for me. Um, Lilith conjunct Saturn. Maybe you want to be a leader. I mean, I kind of said this earlier. You want to lead your own path. You want to blaze your own trail. Um but I don't think you want to be alone. I think you want to be maybe, maybe eventually you can be a leader of other people who are also rebelling in some kind of way. I don't know what you're rebelling against, um, but you, you know, or it could also just be that, you know, you're interested in, you know, occult information and strange ideas. Maybe it could just be a leader in, I don't know, educating about some kind of strange or unusual spirituality or uh, concepts maybe. I'm not really sure, but something involving being a leader of a group and doing so in a strange counterculture or even kind of dark way. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense at all, but um, but yeah, that's that's uh, I see some potential there for you. Let's talk about your childhood a little bit. So, having South Node in Cancer with IC in Virgo. To me, suggests you were a very sensitive child. Uh, like I said, you may have been very emotional. But with IC and Virgo, you were very intellectual as well. Um, you wanted to learn. You may have read a lot or been very curious. Um, you could handle a lot of information as a kid. And... What else can I say about that? With sun and moon in opposite signs, that suggests that your parents were very different from one another. Um, I think you would have been closer with your mother than your father because moon is in the second house, which is a pretty strong house. And having cancer rising with cancer south node, it looks like the kind of motherly or, or feminine energy is much more familiar to you than the masculine energy maybe um 
especially in terms of kind of where you come from like you come from i don't know i could just see your mother being closer to you uh your son and saturn are in the eighth house which is it for one it doesn't form a strong aspect with the ascendant or the first house also the eighth house is somewhat close to the descendant anytime you have major placements close to the descendant it suggests that your parents weren't close to you so especially um sun and saturn both are in the eighth house and both of them can represent the father um, so that this suggests to me that your father was maybe less close to you or didn't understand you maybe he expected you to be something different than what you actually were and what you are however saturn is in domicile and it's direct which to me suggests that your father was present in your upbringing so it's not that your father wasn't there i think it's just that he didn't understand you or there's some kind of disconnect there but it's not that he was absent that's a big difference um what else can we talk about oh okay with sun and moon in opposing signs parents may have been very different they may have had different attitudes with raising you different parenting styles different expectations different personalities so that may have been very confusing for you as a child um, but I think I always say this can be advantageous though, in the sense that it sort of trained you to hold two completely different ideas in your head at the same time. And that in itself is advantageous because it trains you to learn, to be able to learn advanced concepts. And it also, it also trains you at having empathy. You can empathize with others who may be going through something that you've never experienced. Um, so, so again, you know, it's just showing that there's a lot of contrast in your personality, contrast in your upbringing, and contrast in your abilities. You can be very detached, and you can also be very emotional, very passionate. I think you would generally lean toward the passionate side more so, but, but again, I think the more you mature and kind of go through life, I think you'll learn to, to balance um, the, I don't know, the logic, the logical side of your personality with the emotional side. Um, I think you'll learn to be maybe a little bit detached as you get older. Let's talk about your career a little bit. So um, it is interesting you have Medevin in Pisces. And for some reason, it seems like this placement keeps coming up recently in charts that i've read but um midheaven in pisces can be a very strong placement it can also be very challenging because midheaven has to do with your reputation and your your identity in terms of your your career and public image right and having that being in pisces pisces is all over the place pisces is so multifaceted it's constantly changing so that means that your identity with your career and your, your reputation isn't really consistent you know you can do this you can do that um it may be difficult for you to really know what you want with your career or reputation um you know part of you wants to be everything to everyone and that can be very difficult however this can be favorable though in the sense that you know sometimes it can be advantageous to be everything to everyone People will project on you. They'll see what they want to see. They'll see what they don't want to see. Um, if you can learn to use that, I think it can be very powerful. And I always say, like, Lady Gaga is the main public figure that I'm aware of that has Midheaven in Pisces, and she's known for all these different costumes on stage, right? So that's a great, that's a perfect example. Um, I just covered Kamala Harris's chart as well. She also has Pisces Midheaven. So, um, so again there's different ways you can utilize that there's many different ways that you can utilize that but um but another way of analyzing mid and pisces would be to say that you come across like pisces in your career and reputation so you could take that and do something spiritual or do something um i don't know you know take on some kind of role either helping people's mental health helping with people's lifestyles uh, maybe again teaching occult information i think that something like that would kind of m match with your personality since you have 
other placements like Mercury and Pisces and your Cancer placements that align with that to some extent. Um, or something nurturing as well. I think with mid in Pisces, Mercury in Pisces, and Sun in Aquarius, I don't remember if I said this earlier, but you really empathize with the underdog. You want to help those that can't help themselves. So I could also see you, again, maybe going into a caretaker role. I said before that you were some kind of caretaker in a past life. So um, I could see you being a really excellent you know, nurse or maybe doctor as well but i think you would prefer to be the one who's like more hands-on helping people um i guess you could help people in a more indirect way but i think i think you'd rather be hands-on like face to face with people as far as i can tell um yeah i could see you either helping people teaching people something with helping those that are less fortunate or less capable than than yourself maybe in some way or maybe less informed um helping others nurturing others teaching others um, i could see you being maybe a great a great parent for that reason as well um what else but yeah if i had to pick a certain career for you i could see you being a leader but it's more in the sense of being a leader of like like i was saying a leader by helping someone else like by helping lift someone else up um you even have chiron that's kind of like flirting with your first house it's either in the first or second house depending on what house system you use um so chiron is a major player for you as well you do want to help other people um maybe it could be something having to do with past traumas or struggles that you've had where no one was there to help you with what you struggled with by helping other people who are currently going through what you previously struggled with that can be something that is very healing to yourself it'll give you purpose and it'll it'll give that experience purpose and meaning it'll be alchemy right because you're turning a bad experience into something that's you know led to something more productive or more beautiful if that makes sense hopefully hopefully that makes sense um, so anyway, I know I got a little bit abstract and vague there, but um, for your career, I think you want to help other people. Yeah, nurse, teacher, um, but especially a teacher of, I don't know, some, something unusual or strange, um, maybe something metaphysical in nature, spiritual... I don't know, something I would do with like conspiracy theories or metaphysics. I think that's a, I think that's as much as I can narrow it down. Um, lastly, for your compatibility, we'll talk about what themes, what traits are you attracted to? What kind of person do I see you being with? How do I see the ideal relationship playing out for you? And we'll kind of briefly go through all the signs and elements for you. Um, so this should actually be very straightforward for you. The rest of your chart is somewhat convoluted and complicated and has so many different energies to it. But you do have one part of your life that I think is a little bit more straightforward, hopefully. Um, and I have to be careful with what I say. You do have a lot of planets in the seventh house, which does suggest, I don't know, a colorful and you know diverse, multifaceted experience with relationships. But on the other hand, the three placements that I look to for compatibility and attraction and all of these things are Venus, Mars, and the Descendant. And for you, they're all in one sign. They're all in Capricorn. Um, so, so to me, that suggests a huge attraction and compatibility with either personalities that have major placements in Capricorn or, or personalities that are just kind of reminiscent of Capricorn. Um, they don't strictly have to have Capricorn placements. They could have other similar energies in their chart, like other Earth signs or maybe other Saturn ruled signs like Aquarius. Um, but let's kind of go into that. So, yeah, this is really unusual. I, I don't, I can't even remember the last chart I had where, or the last chart I read with all three of these placements in the same sign it actually really gets tricky when you put all three in completely different elements because then it becomes very you know multifaceted what you need in a partner and what you're attracted to but for you that's not the case so with venus mars 
and descendant all in Capricorn. And Venus and Mars are also conjunct, which I, I noticed before, but I didn't really talk about at all. Um, I didn't really think about it, I guess. So I want to tackle that first before I go on to, into your compatibility. With Venus and Mars conjunct, this is another placement that suggests you are extremely aware of your pleasures, your desires. You're extremely aware of what you want. And that's something that really echoes throughout your chart because that's also something that goes along with Cancer Rising, Cancer South Node conjunct the Rising, Moon in Second House Leo, mostly those. Um, but combining those placements with Venus and Mars conjunct, um, it may be difficult for you just how you're so aware of what you want, which that sounds enviable for me because I have the opposite problem. I don't really know what I want. Um, but you, you may be too aware of what you want at any given time so much so that it could be frustrating. It may be difficult fault for you not to fall into, you know, hedonism. Um, so yeah, that looks like a very huge issue for you actually, even though Venus and Mars are in Capricorn, which suggests you do value the long term. You want to be responsible. You value you know, being grounded and grounding energies. Still, though, with Venus Mars conjunct, you, it's um, it's a super pleasurable um, c conjunction. Two of our recent presidents, Joe Biden and um, oh, I'm forgetting his name, Bill. You know what I'm saying. Um, we've had two presidents that have been, I don't know, controversial or kind of gotten to, into trouble because of this type of energy, if that makes sense. Um, I've also noticed this placement in other people that I actually can't even talk about. So, um, <laughs> so, but basically the bottom line is, I guess what I said, just being so aware of what you want. Um, so focused on pleasure. Um... But anyway, so Uranus and Neptune are conjunct as well. Maybe I'll talk about that later. With Venus, Mars, and Descendant conjunct in Capricorn, you need Capricorn. You want Capricorn. It wouldn't surprise me if you had major relationships with people who had Capricorn Sun or Moon or Rising or other placements. Um, you know, you may be attracted to people that are older than yourself or more experienced in some way. Um, you really want someone who has their shit together, someone very mature, very responsible, very grounded, very independent. Someone who may be a little bit stoic or even cold at times. I don't think that would be a turnoff for you. I think you would still want that. You're craving that structure, I think. Um, because I, I think this energy would complement you really nicely because you're so much more aware in the moment. You're so much more aware on an instinctual and emotional level. I think you're looking for someone else who's very s instinctual as well, but in a more long-term kind of way, in a more, I don't know, grounded, like he heavy sort of way. Um, <laughs> like, it's kind of like you're up in the clouds all the time. You're You're a big dreamer. You have these, like, big you know inspirations and you have this big imagination and big feelings i think you're looking for someone who's a little bit like not larger than life someone smaller so to speak someone who's down on the ground and heavy you're looking for your rock this is something i say a lot like often with compatibility through charts i can see that you know, there's a dreamer and there's a rock. So I see you being the dreamer, so to speak, in a romantic relationship. And I see you being with a rock, so to speak, someone more grounding. You would bring fun and excitement into the relationship. They would bring stability and, I don't know, security. That's how I see that playing out for you, ideally. Um, also, I see you being the more emotionally nurturing one in the relationship. And again, your partner, I think, ideally would be more also nurturing but in a more long-term way a more physical or kind of pragmatic way like more nurturing through i don't know through like planning or managing money managing time for the two of you things like that um so y you can definitely find this with capricorn you can also find it with other earth placements another part of this is that you're wanting someone who's a little bit 
humble. I guess I kind of touched on that because you yourself can be a little bit grandiose or larger than life, as I said. I think you're wanting someone more, yeah, just down to earth, humble, like, um, <laughs> I think you can actually be very humble and down to earth in the way that you express your emotion as well. Um, you can be a little bit understated in that area. You can be maybe exaggerated and, and dramatic in other parts of your life, but romantically, you're actually very down to earth, very sensible, practical. So I think ideally you're looking for someone else who is that way as well. Um, you will definitely find that with Capricorn. Capricorn definitely stands out to me the most, having all three of your compatibility placements in Capricorn. That would be my number one choice for you for sure. Um, it would balance, you know, it would be opposite your south node. Oh, that's the thing too. You have your north node in, in Capricorn. So <laughs> there's so much going on there with four planets and the north node and you're de descended there. Um, but anyway, so Capricorn will help you to grow and to evolve because your north node is there. So I don't usually recommend, sorry, I, I kind of injured myself recently, so I'm, I keep like wincing. I don't know if you can hear that. I was going to say, I don't usually recommend um, being with the sign of your north node romantically, but in your case, it looks like that is what you're seeking. Um, the reason why I don't usually recommend it is because it can be unstable. It does push you to constantly learn and to grow, but that in itself can be a drain romantically. It can take the fun out of it. However, with Venus and Mars in Capricorn, that shows that you're going to have a lot of fun. You know, you have a lot of, um, you have a lot of chemistry with Capricornian personalities. You can be very flirtatious, maybe even very sexual. But more than that, you can be truly compatible on a deep level as well. Um, so you have all those placements kind of complementing, you know, helping that um, that compatibility connection for you. Um, so yeah, Capricorn would be my number one choice. Other Earth signs could work as well. I think Virgo would be a little bit more challenging. Virgo is very analytical. I think that would be a challenge for you because you are... You can be analytical too, but I think you're more, your, your emotions are so strong and Virgo, um, Virgo can have strong feelings too, but they analyze everything. They're, they're very analytical, like the same way that I am, you know, I've been analyzing for almost an hour nonstop. This is what I do partially for a living. You know what I mean? Like, I think it takes a very special kind of person to be attracted to that, to be around that you know, every day. Um, your chart doesn't necessarily suggest to me that that's what you're seeking. Virgo could work with the right other placements in a person's chart, but on its own, I just don't see anything in your chart suggesting that you're wanting something that analytical. Um, Virgo would be grounding and kind of humble for you. And so Virgo would be attractive in that way for you, I think. But, but again, Virgo is so analytical. Um, and you're so in touch with your feelings. I think that would be a difficult. It would be difficult for the two of you to maintain empathy, understanding, communication, things like that. Um, Taurus, I could see being more attractive for you, though. I like Taurus much more. Um, Taurus has a lot in common with Capricorn, I think more so than any other sign. Because Taurus, unlike Virgo, Taurus is a little bit more instinctual. Taurus is still very practical, but also... I think that practicality comes from a place of instinct, very reminiscent of Capricorn. Taurus and Capricorn are both extremely stable as well, very grounded, um, generally very humble. Um, but yeah, and then also Taurus is a fixed sign, so it will clash with your sun and your moon signs. It'll form a T-square. But I always say I don't mind these square aspects with compatibility because the two of you may butt heads at times you are very strong-willed with your fixed sun and fixed moon like you could maybe be a very you, you might be a little bit stubborn at times um you won't want to compromise you just are what you are and that's it um taurus is that way as well just in a different way so that's where you will butt heads but ideally you'll understand and respect each other because both of you are so strong-willed uh you know taurus is also strong-willed taurus is also stubborn the difference is that they're a little bit more grounded maybe than you are. So I think you and Taurus could be very complimentary. I think you could be attracted to one another. 
again you will butt heads but i it that's not the end of the world it can actually add a certain tension which can create passion or excitement it can make the the connection more dynamic um, and again taurus has enough in common with capricorn that they will still line up with much of what you are seeking so i guess capricorn would be my first choice followed by taurus taurus could work really beautifully for you as well Um, okay, let's briefly go through the other elements to see your compatibility. I mean, with Venus, Mars, and the Descendant in Capricorn, Earth signs definitely stand out more than any others. Capricorn and Taurus in particular. Uh, but let's look at air signs because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Aquarius is also ruled by Saturn. It's an air sign. Um, so... You know, Aquarius, you do have Sun in Aquarius, so you may relate to other Aquarius individuals on some level. Um, I think you can be a rebel. Aquarius, other Aquariuses will be rebels. What was that? Other Aquariuses will be rebels as well. You also have your Lilith in Aquarius. If you are around other people that have major placements right around 14 degrees Aquarius, um, you may have excellent chemistry with them, especially sexually, because Lilith can be a very sexual placement. Um, what else? However, if their major placements are around 11 degrees Aquarius, then they'll be close to your Saturn, so they may be, they may come across authoritative or bossy to you. Um, your your relationship may be challenged or delayed. So with Aquarius, I think it really just depends. I think ideally, you know, you are looking for someone more like Capricorn, someone more grounded. Um, but Aquarius could be a strong connection for you, for sure. Uh, let's look at the other air signs. So, Gemini or Libra. I think the difficulty there is that you're looking for someone really grounded and really consistent. You might be able to find that with Aquarius. Libra and Gemini are not very grounded. They're two of the most adaptable, the most flimsy and kind of malleable energies of the Zodiac. They're also two of the least emotional um, energies or signs. Um, I mean, Capricorn can be can come across as cold as well, but I think Capricorn is so aware of like personal boundaries that they won't be offensive or socially kind of tactless. Um, so I think that would fit with you what better. Gemini and Libra are just so detached. They're so kind of empty emotionally. Like they do have emotions, but they're sort of fleeting and um, they kind of analyze their emotions. So I just think it would be an awkward connection with you. Um, you know, combining such detached energies with someone so aware of their emotions, it may be kind of a turnoff to you how unaware of their emotions there are, you know, Gemini and Libra are. And Gemini and Libra may not know what to do with your heavy emotion. Um, so I think that would be, I just, I don't see that working as well. Um, out of any of the air signs, I think Aquarius would, which would work much better. And usually that's what I find with at least the way I assess compatibility. Usually I see a person either be attracted to Aquarius or Gemini and Libra, but not both because Aquarius is more structured, more consistent. Gemini and Libra are constantly changing. They're much more like multifaceted um so i see you being with someone a little bit more consistent that's why i would suggest aquarius rather than gemini or libra uh fire signs so fire signs you will relate to on some level because you have your moon in leo deep down you are a fire sign on that level you can be very passionate very outgoing you know fiery confidence very sure of yourself emotionally um so you'll have that in common with other fire signs. You may enjoy how, you know, they are adventurous just like you are. Um, but if anything, I see you potentially having a deep connection with other fire signs, especially as a friend, I think. That could be part of something more if they have maybe some earth placements as well. But fire signs on their own, I just don't see you being attracted to that energy. You know, again, I could see you being friends or even having some kind of deep connection. Um, but I don't see you being romantically attracted to that that energy. 
you're looking for someone who has their shit together in a really long term way. You're looking for some someone who is in control and you know very like sober i guess you could say very calculated and mature fire signs are all over the place they're very dramatic they're very impulsive they can be very charismatic but um they're much more focused on the you know the now the immediate rather than the long term so it's in a way it's kind of the opposite of what i think you'd be attracted to and really that goes that would be true for any fire sign um aries sagittarius or leo Leo, because your moon is there, I can see you having more of a deep connection with. Um, but Aries and Sagittarius, again, maybe friends, but I don't see, I don't see a really strong romantic connection there for you. Okay, lastly would be the water signs, and I think if your chart does tilt toward one element, I would say it tilts toward water signs, not by a whole lot, but. Um, do you have those few major placements in water signs? So I think any of the water signs, Pisces, well, Pisces and Cancer in particular, but also Scorpio to a lesser extent, I think these are the signs you would relate to the most. Um, again, mostly Pisces and Cancer. You know, and because you relate to them, they could be great friends, but unless they have some major earth placements, I don't see a, a really strong romantic connection being there for you. You want that earth. You want that stable, sturdy energy. Yeah, it can be refreshing being with someone who's so similar to yourself and, you know, un understanding each other so easily and communicating so easily. That can be great. But you're looking for a more complementary dynamic. You're looking for someone who has both feet on the ground. And water signs, they're so emotional. That's like their main card to play. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. I just don't think that's what you're looking for. You already have that. You don't necessarily need someone else who also has those same strengths, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, great friends. Um, romantically, though, I don't think so unless... But don't get me wrong. Like, Let's say someone has Cancer Sun or Pisces Sun, but then they've got a Capricorn Stellium. That could definitely work. Um, that could be really attractive for you. But, but Water Signs on their own, I see more being friends with you. Um, cancer, you, you may have a deep connection with because of your south node and your ascendant. I always say at this part too that I see many couples with the same ascendant sign, so maybe another Cancer rising could be attractive for you. Um, Pisces, you could have great communication with since your Mercury is there. Scorpio, I think you would relate to a little bit less um, because Scorpio is much more private with their emotions. It's a little bit more intense, more guarded. Um, so maybe that could actually be attractive for you because Scorpio is very emotionally aware, but then they're also constantly controlling their emotions in order to find long-term security or happiness, etc. So, um, so maybe I guess they do check off some boxes for you. Um, but I do think Scorpio Leo squares can be dangerous and what's the word destructive for both parties um so because of your leo moon i would maybe caution against i would say to just be extra careful with scorpio personalities um because scorpio controls its emotions i think they can come across like more like leo more um light-hearted fun you know not saying scorpio can't be fun but they can come across more like a fire sign, so you may think that you have more in common with them than you actually do. Um, but once you get to know them, Scorpio needs a lot of security, which, you know, being Leo Moon and being so, you know, dramatic and outgoing and maybe attention seeking at times, all of that is going to be, um, it's going to make Scorpio feel out of control. And so that's where both of your insecurities will be kind of, um, triggered. So Scorpio is interesting with your chart. I could see it checking off a lot of boxes for you, but I, I could also see it being kind of a dangerous connection for you. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking at Taurus or Capricorn for you more than anything else. Um, the only like secondary tier signs I would look at would be maybe Aquarius or Virgo. 
and really that's it you i think your compatibility is very simple astrologically but but as always i would love to hear your experience if that matches up with what i've stated or if it's a little different um but yeah that's pretty much my take on your compatibility oh last thing about your compatibility though so another way of assessing compatibility would be that all the pla- all the planets in your seventh house you are attracted to the themes of each of those planets on some level so with mars in the seventh house you want someone ambitious someone assertive um with venus in the seventh house you want someone who's also diplomatic and socially intelligent someone who's attractive like knows how to be pleasant and things like that um and with uranus and neptune in the seventh house you also want someone spiritual unusual um someone who has their own beliefs and someone who is kind of otherworldly extremely unique um independent thinking so with that being said I guess that strengthens the idea in my head that you might be attracted to Aquarius maybe or maybe even Pisces. Those are the two signs I would think could maybe fit all those. (laughs) Um, But um, but yeah, I'd still go with Capricorn and Taurus uh, the most for you. Okay, but that's my take on your chart. So let me know any feedback or questions that you have. I'm always open for those. And yeah, for anyone else watching, if you'd like a reading just like this one, please um, request one if you'd like. Okay, but thank you for watching and have a great day.